I'm not pulling on my driveway. We all know what that means. It's time for the drive to work, coronavirus edition. Okay, so I'm doing a series on uh, all the card by car stories from Unglued. Uh, in part one, I did white and blue. In part two, I did black and red. So today is part three, um, green and artifacts. So let's get let's get to it. So a cardboard carapace, five and a green enchant creature. Um, oh, so by the way, once again, this is early magic. So uh, now it says enchantment aura, and then enchant creatures on the in the card text. Once upon a time, uh, it would say enchant what it enchanted in the card type line, and didn't say enchantment on it. Like, creatures didn't say creature, enchantments didn't say enchantment. We sixth edition cleaned all that up, but anyway. Okay, for each other cardboard carapace card you have with you, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And then there uh, is a rata. It's a sticker that says a rata. Uh, this does not count any cardboard carapace cards in play that you control or in your graveyard hand or library. So the idea is, what I wanted for this card was, I wanted you to, to collect a lot of it. Um, although this card is a rare. Um... But the idea is that this was really playing... To, and like, the, the goal of this card was to get as many of them as you could. And the interesting thing was no one would care about this card except people who cared about this card. But the idea I was hoping for was the people that cared would really care and the people that didn't care wouldn't care. So the people that would really care would want to trade it. And, and you know, the people who want it would trade for it. And anyway, I was trying to... Anyway, it was, I was just trying to do something fun here. Um, and the idea was it could get really, really big. Like, I mean, it could get infinite. We, we cost it as, let's assume you have 100 of them. Let's, let's assume it's infinitely big. Um, also, by the way, underneath the sticker, um, there is flavor text there we wrote. It's something like, this is not that all exciting. If you could see it, it's not that, it's not that exciting or something. Um, but we, we cover up with a sticker. So this is, this, uh, the rata is baked into the car. So it was always there. Although if you ever, there's an interesting question with R&D Secret Lair. If you lose... Because uh, it makes you get rid of, but it, well, Andy's secret letter is interesting in that the card is written this way, but it has a rata sticker on it. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, I was just one of the things I was trying in the, in this set was just doing weird things, and this card was like, hey, do you enjoy collecting things? This was a card that rewarded you for collecting. That isn't something magic d d does quite in the same way. And so, like, I, I know people who have like will pick a card and they'll have you know hundreds and hundreds of copies of that one card. Uh, this card was to those players, right? Here's something to really try to sink your teeth into. Okay, next up, um, double play. Uh, three green, green, so five mana total. Uh, sorcery. Choose another player, search your library for a basic land, and put that land into play. At the beginning of your next game with that player, search your library for an additional basic land and put that land into play. In both cases, shuffle your library afterwards. Uh, the wizard exclaimed, I'm no chicken. So this, that's part of it. One of these days, maybe before this is done, I will read the... Or maybe I should do it right... Should I do it right now? I'm going to do it right now. Because I keep saying I want to do this. Okay, so... In a duel and taking a lickin', the wizard exclaimed, I'm no chicken. I'm facing defeat. Oh, sorry. Um, but the next time we meet... Is that right? I'm facing defeat? Oh, hold on a second. Uh... Make sure we get the order of this. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's... Once again, let's start from the beginning here. It's... In a duel and taking a lickin', the wizard exclaim, I'm no chicken. I'm facing defeat, but the next time we meet, you're in for a real... You're in for a nasty butt kicking. <laughs> so that is, that is the, the, the limerick of the, the double cards. Okay, next up, Elvish Impersonators. Three and a green, star, star, summon elves. Uh, this is back in the day, by the way, where we had plurals. And now we just say creature elf. We, no matter how many el elves there are, we, it's just singular. Uh, when you play Elvish Impersonators, roll two six-sided die, one after the other. Elvish Impersonator comes into play with power equal to the first die roll and toughness equal to the second. And its flavor text is, uh-huh. Um, so this is... Uh, one of my favorite die rolling cards. So the idea is that its power and toughness are each variable. And so you can have anything from a 1-1 a one, one up to a 6-6. Six, six. And you can have, you know, 1-2, one, 1-6, one, six, three, four. Uh, this is a fun card. Um, and I enjoy it. I, li I like this card a lot. I think I told the story in, the, in the, my last Unglued of how um, the artist drew young Elvis. And I went back and said, no, we want old Elvis. <laughs> Okay, next, flock of, racket sheep, flock of Rabid Sheep, X green green, sorcery. 
Flip X coins, an opponent calls heads or tails. For each flip you win, put a rabid sheep token into play. Treat these tokens as two two green creatures that count as sheep. Um, and it says, and their bleeding was like a wet salmon slapped upon the land. Slap, slap, slap. Um, this is a, just a die rolling card. I don't, even, I don't even know why. Maybe it's because it's high variance. I'm not sure why that's in the set. Um, I like the. I mean, it makes sheep, which I guess was. Although no, Magic even had sheep. There was a. Ovino Man to me cheap. So I, I don't know. This is another card that I look back and I'm like, why was this in an unset? Um, so we do, we, I mean, I guess it was a high variance coin flipping card because if you, let's say you flip eight coins, you, you could end up with eight two twos, which could be really good. So, although that would be 10 mana, so maybe that's okay. Anyway, next. Free range chicken. Three and a red, three, three, summon chicken. One and, one and a green. Roll two six sided dice. If both die rolls are the same, uh, free range chicken gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number rolled on each die. Otherwise, if the total rolled is equal to any total you've rolled this turn for free range chicken, sacrifice it. For example, if you roll two threes, free range chicken gets plus two plus three. If you roll a total of six for free range chicken later on the turn, sacrifice it. So the idea is this is what we call a push your luck mechanic. I roll two dice, and if I roll, I, 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 I have the ability to make it as big as plus six plus six. Um, and in theory, I could get. Uh, Plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three, plus four, plus four, plus five, five, plus six, plus six. So I could get plus twenty one, plus twenty one. In a perfect world, I could, I could, and I have enough mana, and I roll perfectly. Uh, this could become a twenty four, twenty four in theory. Um, but anyway, the idea is that you don't know how often you'll get something. One in six, you'll repeat. But um, you know, the chance of you rolling the same uh, result is not super high. So you know, uh, it, it's a push your luck mechanic, and it's the green part of the. There's a chicken cycle. There's a chicken in every color, so it's part of that cycle. Next, gerrymandering. Tuna green, sorcery. Remove all lands from play and shuffle them together. Randomly deal to each player one land card from each land he or she had before. Each player puts those land into play under his or her control. So, who designed gerrymandering? Richard Garfield in Alpha. Uh, this was a card, Richard. So, in early Alpha, or early, sorry, in early, you know, before Alpha came out, in early Magic, um, Richard did a lot more of uh, ownership swapping. In the end, he did some anti-cards, but early magic. So this card originally in Alpha, not only did you change the land, but you now owned those lands. It was forever changed. Uh, and, and Richard ended up not doing that. He had to told me about the card. I, I liked it. I thought it was fun. Uh, I made it, obviously, so you got the land back in return, but um, I did think it was kind of a cool effect. Um Gerrymandering is me making fun of the fact that we use big words sometimes. Gerrymandering is the redistricting of political things to, to your advantage. Um, it's funny, gerrymandering has become much more, the, the term is a lot more known now than it was back in 1998, I guess, when this came out. Um, so the time was a very unknown word. Now, it, sadly, because all the gerrymandering people know it a little better. Next, Gazvan Ogres. Green, 2-2, two, two, summon Ogre. When Gazvan Ogres comes into the play, the player who has the most magic games that day gains control of it. If more than one player has won the same number of games, you retain control of Gazvan Ogres. Um, I like the idea of caring about some weird thing uh, that, ha that impacted. Like, okay, well, who's won more games today? Um, and then there's a card called Gazvan Ogre in Arabian Nights, I think. Um, this is making This is riffing off of. Um, but anyway, you can just tell me, me sort of just caring about a lot of weird, different things. Okay, Growth Spurt. Growth Spurt costs one and a green. Roll six, instant. Roll six sided die. Target creature gets plus plus X at the end of turn, where X is equal to the die roll. And then, uh, the flavor text looks like a, um, a personal ad. It says, more to love. Friendly, nature-loving, Bunyan-esque SEM seeks SEF, looking for a huge commitment. SEM is single elvish male. Look, seeking single elvish female, by the way. Um, anyway, I like the idea of a die roll. There's a lot of variance to this card because plus one plus one is a far cry from plus six plus six. Um, one of the things in general I learned from this set was, um, that there's a lot of fun with variance and die rolling is fun. And I definitely sort of had fun making a lot of cards that played in that space. Okay, next, Gus. Tuna green, summon Gus. Uh, Gus comes into play with one plus one plus one counter on it for each game you've lost to your opponent since you last won a magic game against him or her. Uh, now I lay me down to sleep. Hey, what are you looking at? So this is another uh, slush piece of art. I talked last, and I talked in the podcast where I talked about black, how um, 
uh, Temp of the Damned was another piece of slush art. I just got this art. We had used it for something else and didn't end up using the card. And so I just made it. He looked like a Gus to me, so I called him Gus. Um, it is a little weird. I call him Gus, and he's not a legendary creature because Gus sounds like... So I guess there's many Gusses is what I'm trying to say. Um, this is another card like Gosvon Ogres that just cares about weird things outside the game. Like, this card cares about how many games I've won against my opponent. So the idea is, if my opponent keeps beating me, if every time I play one, this person, they keep beating me, well, my gust just gets bigger and bigger. So at some point, I, I don't lose, is the hope. Next, Hungry Hungry Heifer. Two and a green, three, three, summon cow. During your upkeep, remove a counter from any card you control or sacrifice Hungry Hungry Heifer. And then it has Moo in giant font. The joke there is, uh, we had done a card, um, I think it was Ray of Command, where it was something like heal was the, the flavor text, and we thought it was really funny. So for a while, in every in every set, we did a flavor text that was exactly four one word, four letters long. And then we stopped doing it. The very last one we did was in this set. And so I did Moo. I made Moo four letters and, and made it really big to sort of say, and that's the punchline. We, we finished doing this joke. Uh, and Hungry Hungry Heifer is a reference to Hasbro's Hungry Hungry Hippos. Okay, next, incoming, four green, 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 green. So eight mana total, four of which is green. Sorcery, each player searches his or her library for any number of artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands and puts those cards into play. Each player shepherds his or her library afterwards. Uh, this is one of those things that maybe we would do in Black Border now, though I don't know if we crossed it to eight mana. Uh, it is pretty crazy. I had an incoming deck. It is pretty crazy. Also, uh, if you play incoming with BFM and you get both pieces of BFM, BFM comes in play, which is also cool. Uh, this card is a little crazy. I mean, the, one of the reasons maybe we made it silver border is it is a little on the nutty side. But I think with a different cost, it probably could be a black border, but it, it's still a pretty big effect. Mine, mine, mine. Four green, green, enchantment. Um, want mine, mine, mine. Uh, when mine, mine, mine comes into play, each player puts his or her library into his or her hand. Each player skips his or her discard phase and does not lose as a result of being unable to draw a card. Each player cannot play more than one spell each turn. If mine, mine, mine leaves play, each player shuffles his or her hand and graver into his or her library. So the idea is you pick up your library and then for the rest of the game, you can only play one spell a turn, but you, you get to play all your cards. Um, uh... On a, um, oh, okay, so the artist uh, is Heather Hudson. Uh, she was married to, um, she's married to um, Dan Jellen. I talked about Dan Jellen uh, in my Red Ot podcast, who, who uh, Dan had done uh, the art direction for the set. Anyway, the wizard in this picture is, that's Dan, I mean, with the beard and stuff, you know, look, looking older than Dan normally looks, but um, that uh, Heather did draw Dan as the wizard in the picture. Um, also, by the way, this card, uh, there was an episode of Game Nights where they played Uncommander, uh, and Mind, Mind, Mind got played, and it was a very big part of the game. So if you ever want to see Mind, Mind, Mind play, look up, um, the Game Nights where the Ungame Nights. Okay, next, Squirrel Farm. One of my favorite, this is one of my favorite designs, favorite undesigns. Two in a green, enchantment, one in green, choose a card in your hand, covering the artist's name, reveal the card to target player. If that player cannot name the artist, reveal the artist's name and put a squirrel token into play. Treat this token as a 1-1 green creature. Uh, and the ignorance shall fall to the squirrels, chip 254. Uh, I, 254 is my favorite number, by the way, if you didn't know, it's in my uh, Twitter handle. So I, I clearly uh, did the favorite text for this card. Um... So anyway, I liked the idea of doing a card that cared about art. I needed some effect, uh, and I liked counters as being the effect. Uh, green makes a lot of tokens. Uh, now white is more in demand of making 1-1 tokens. Green tends to make bigger tokens nowadays, but green does make 1-1s from time to time, and back in the day, it was king of 1-1s. Uh, anyway, 1-1s, what could it be? It had to be squirrels, so um, I made the squirrel farm. Next, team spirit, two and a green, instant. All creatures controlled by target player and his or her teammate get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, due to some late night... Party, the chicken missed the group photo. Um, this was part of our teammate cycle, our multiplayer cycle. It, it was more of a multiplayer cycle, I guess, than a teammate cycle. Three of the cards reference teammates, but two of the cards don't. Um, anyway, I think the flavor text was, we were, once we realized we wanted to have a chicken theme, we realized that we were a little low on chicken, so we added some chicken flavor where we could. So the idea here is we referenced the chicken, even though the chicken wasn't actually in the art. Next, Timmy Power Gamer. Um, two green, green, one, one, summon legend, four, put a card into play from your hand. Uh, just wait till I get my Leviathan. This card has since become, it's got renamed like Elvish Piper, I think. 
Um, this card has since been done in Black Border. Um, although Elvis Piper might have a tap on it, I'm not sure. But anyway, we basically made this card, if not exactly this card, in it. Uh, the, the art in the card does reference a guy named Joe Grace, who used to be in R&D, who was very Timmy. Uh, and so we made him, the, we had him pause for the art. Um, but anyway, this is another card that uh, barely, I mean, the idea of referencing Timmy was kind of on, but um, it's one of the psychographics. Um, we, we have since, by the way, uh, Unhinged did Johnny and Unstable did Spike. So we've done all three of the psychographics. Um, but anyway, this card probably, it was very, very close to being Black Border when we printed it. Now for sure it's Black Border. And like I said, we, we basically made a Black Border. Okay, next, Astronaut's Coupon, zero, artifact. Uh, tap, sacrifice Astronaut's Coupon, target player gets you a drink. Errata, you pay any cost for the drink. Limited time offer, void prohibited, limited one per purchase, void only in participating duels. This coupon is non-transferable and un invalid if shattered, crumbled, detonated, pillaged, or otherwise disenchanted. Uh, cash value less than one twentieth of a cent. Offer not valid in Quebec, Rhode Island, and were prohibited by law or the DCI. We actually looked at real... Um, Real contest flavor text to get that flavor text. Um, this, anyway, this has become a very popular card. It just makes someone go get you a drink. Uh, if you have R&D Secret Lair, the errata doesn't happen, so they pay for the drink. Uh, you can always concede and not pay for the drink. Um, but anyway, this has become a very... It's just a very goofy card. It, it doesn't have a lot of functionality. It just makes people get you a drink. So, But anyway, it, it's become super popular just as a fun, goofy card. Blacker Lotus, zero, artifact. Um, tap, tear Black or Lotus into pieces, add four mana of any color to your mana pool, play this ability as, as a mana source, remove the pieces from the game afterward. Mana source was a term we used for a while, talking about effects, so you can, certain effects, like, interrupt, anyway, it was a weird, it was a weird set of rules, I, I don't need to get into it. It was a thing. Um, so the idea was, it was better than a Black Lotus, instead of getting three mana, you got four mana, the only downside was you had to rip it up and destroy it. Um, this card in our, uh, market research got the worst marks, uh, Chaos Confetti got second. Apparently players do not like ripping up their cards. Um, anyway, uh, uh, Chris Rush did the art cause he had done the original Black Lotus. Um, but it, it, we were just having fun and I thought it'd be cool to say, well, here's a card once. You can use it once. Bronze Calendar 4 Artifact. Uh, your spells cost one less to play as long as you speak in a voice other than your normal voice. If you speak in your normal voice, sacrifice Bronze Calendar. Every page holds a month, every date a numeral. So the idea is um, we were making fun. The, the picture shows a bronze calendar, not a bronze calendar. Um, we were making fun of the card stone calendar. Uh, and then I basically wanted to make a stone calendar that was the cost I meant. Stone calendar cost five, and I thought it should never cost five. I thought it should cost four. So I made it so it cost four. Uh, and I made you talk in a silly voice, but who doesn't want to talk in a silly voice? Um, and then we made this joke about sometimes uh, artists would get the art wrong, especially in early magic. That doesn't happen nearly as much anymore. Um, and, you know, you want them to draw a lemur, and they draw a lemur, things like that. Um, anyway, I was making fun of that, and so it's a bronze calendar. But the card's bronze calendar, but art's bronze calendar. Next, Chaos Confetti, four. Artifact, four and tap. Tear Chaos Confetti into pieces. Throw the pieces onto the playing area from a distance of at least five feet. Destroy each card in play that a piece touches. Remove the pieces from the game afterwards. And you thought that was just an urban legend. So there is a story in Magic how people are playing with a Chaos, a chaos Orb, and they did exactly what this thing says, how they ripped it up and then threw it and... Uh, you can't actually do that really with Chaos uh, Confetti, but it was a that's with, that's right, with Chaos Orb. And so we decided to make reference to that. Like Black or Lotus, the idea was you ripped it up to use it, but it was a common. So the idea was you'd have a lot more Chaos Confetti, so you'd be a lot more willing to rip it up. Black or Lotus was meant to be a special thing you didn't use that often. Clay Pigeon, uh, three, Artifact Creature, flying. One, throw Clay Pigeon into the air at least two feet above your head while seated. Attempt to catch it with one hand. If you catch Clay Pigeon, prevent all damage to you from any one source and return Clay Pigeon to the play tapped. Otherwise, sacrifice it. Uh, in design, by the way, now you have to throw it up, but your opponent was allowed to throw cards at you or throw cards uh, while you were trying to catch it. But Mike Elliott demonstrated to me how he could just hurt me by throwing cards at my head, and so we took that part off. Um, but anyway... Uh, it's a physical dexterity card. It's actually really hard to do. Throwing up a card and catching it is very hard to do. If you practice and get good at it, maybe you can do it. Uh, it ended up being a little bit too hard to do. The average person just can't do it. Um, next, Giant Fan. Giant Fan costs four mana. Um, it's an artifact. Two and tap. Move target counter from one card to another. If the second card's rule text refers to any type of counter, the move counter becomes one of those counters. Otherwise, it becomes a plus one, plus one counter. Only a villain would unleash a giant fan on anyone. 
Um, giant fan, uh, we have, this has inspired a real magic card. You can't, uh, Black Border Magic, oh, sorry, I, I just said real, I should not say real. These are real cards. I shame on you, Mark, for saying real. Black Border. Um, Silver Border are real. Um, the, uh, this effect, the Black Border can move counters, but it can't change the counters so they become new counters based on what that card cares about. It can't do that. You can move it, and you can just say, you can say just move it and say what it is. You can say move it and it becomes the thing you name. Move it and, you know, it can become a plus one, plus one counter. Um, that's how we did it in Mirrodin, is it becomes a plus one, plus one, or a charge counter, which are the two things that were used there. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a fun card. It plays in my Johnny sensibilities. I tried to make this in normal magic, couldn't, which is why it ended up here. Next, Jack in the Mox, zero. Roll six out of die. On a one, sacrifice Jack in the Mox and lose five life. Otherwise, Jack in the Mox has one of the following. Two red, blue, three red, blue, uh, sorry, two red, white, three red, blue, four red, black, five red, red, six red, green. Again, it doesn't need a sacrifice. It just do nothing. And two, five life? <laughs> Man, I punish you for rolling badly in this. I don't need to punish you so badly. That, that's the big lesson of life is die rolling cards. Uh, Jack in the Mox, I know it actually has shown up in some... Uh, some people put it in their cube. It's, it's a weirdly risky card, uh, but it is quite powerful. E even if, by the anyway, it's still very powerful, even though it destroys itself. Next, Dr Jester Sombrero. Uh, costs two generic mana. Artifact, two and tap. Sacrifice Jester Sombrero. Look through target player's sideboard and move any three of those cards from it for the remainder of the match. And there's a little um, chihuahua saying, Yo quiero Cormus Bell. Making a little Taco Bell joke, which is very dated at this point. Um... And so uh, there was a card called Jester's Cap. Um, in um, Jester's Cap was in uh, Ice Age, and I was making a re reference. The same artist, Dan Fraser, did Jester's Sombrero. A little, uh, a little bit of trivia: um, Jester's Sombrero ended up being on the uh, booster pack for the set, and I ended up buying the art from Dan Fraser. I'm now looking at it because it's in my home. Uh, but it's, I, I own four original pieces of magic art, which is I own Morrow, the original Morrow. I own Jester Sobrero. Um, I own Look at the DCI, which is also from the set, which I did and I kept. Uh, it, it, it's framed with the check that I never cashed, the $1 check I got for, for doing the art. Uh, and then um, my, I, which was on the, the unhinged booster pack, um, Matt Cavada, who did it, gave it to me as, as a birthday present. So those are my four pieces of original magic art. Three of which are from Unsets. Uh, okay, next up. Mirror, Mirror, seven mana, artifact. Mirror, Mirror comes into play, tapped. Seven tap, sacrifice Mirror, Mirror. At end of turn, exchange life totals with target player and exchange all cards in play that you control and all cards in your hand, library, and graveyard with that player at the end of game. Uh, the idea essentially is you swap, you swap positions with them. So they're playing your game and you're playing their game. Um, the original idea was for the entire card to be mirror imaged. Uh, but people were worried that no one could read it. So we ended up sort of mirroring the name and the um, type line. So, like, it shows normal, then shows mirrored. Uh, but I still kind of wish we'd mirrored it. I, yeah, it'd be hard to re read, but it'd be, I don't know. It'd be, I, I, I think we should have done it. Oh, we also mirrored um, the artist credit as well. Okay, next up, Paper Tiger, Rock Lobster, and Scissor Lizard, all of which cost four mana, all of which are four three artifact creatures. Rock Lobster cannot attack or block. Oh, sorry. Paper Tiger says Rock Lobster cannot attack or block. Rock Lobster says Scissor Lizards can't attack or block. Scissor Lizard says Paper Tigers can't attack or block. And then uh, Paper Tiger says the Tiger's always quick to fold. Rock Lobster says many take the lobster for granted. And Scissor Lizard says nothing beats the lizard's sheer power. S-H-E-A-R. Um, so Paper Tiger and Rock Lobster are actual expressions. Um, scissor Lizards we had to make up. So the idea of making rock, paper, scissors, which is an expression used with... I mean, it's a game, obviously. People talk about magic being rock, paper, scissors. So we literally did that. Um, rock beats scissors. Scissors beats paper. Paper beats rock is, is it. Uh, and they're costed, especially for the time they were made, to be a bit on the aggressive side. So the idea is I'm playing paper tiger and my opponent is playing scissor lizard. Oh, no! So. Okay, next. Spatula of the Ages. It costs four generic mana. It's an artifact. Um, four and tap, uh, sacrifice Spatula of the Ages, put into play from your hand any card from an unglued supplement. Uh, and the flavor text is, at last, Urza's power focused through the incredible artifact. Who wants pancakes, he asked. Um, 
So the idea here is we liked a card that just helped you with your on cards. Uh, and and, and the, when we made this, I mean, we didn't know there would be any other sets. So I was really helping you with those unglued cards at the time. Uh, it now helps you with other uh, silver bordered. Um, yeah, from an unglued supplement. I guess we, we did... Uh, we did word it to be a little vague, and, and we it's now the the, uh, the current templating, the Oracle templating is, you may put a silver border permanent card from your hand on the battlefield. So it cares about any, no matter where it is, it could be from unhinged, it can be from unglued, it can be from unstable, unsanctioned, it could be a holiday card from Hascon, wherever you got your silver border card, it, it interacts with it. So that's kind of cool. Um... By the way, there was a card in Unglue 2, the card that never got made, that set never got made, which was uh, the other special of the ages. I thought it was funny. Okay, next up, Urza's Contact Lenses. Urza's Contact Lenses cost zero artifact. Urza's Contact Lenses come into play tapped and does not untap during its controller's untap phase. All players play with their hands face up and then clap your hands twice, tap or untap Urza's Contact Lenses. Um, so the idea of this card... Actually, let me see the Oracle thing. Does it say... Um, oh, yeah, it's, as long as untapped. The idea here is... When you have your contact lenses in, you can see. When you don't, you can't. Um, so when you have them in, uh, Urza, Urza's glasses let you see your opponent's hand. So Urza's contact lenses do the same thing. But you can take them in and out is the idea. Uh, and so you can clap. Oh, but that is everybody can see everybody's hand. And then you can clap your hand. So it, it then has, uh, there's a thing called a clapper where you clap twice to turn on things on and off. We're making fun of stuff like that. Um, so anyway, the idea is it's his contact lenses. He can put them in and out because they're contact lenses. Um, and when, when they're in, everybody gets to have Urza's glasses, basically. Uh, with, with, with a joke. That's why it's Urza's contact lenses, by the way. Okay, next up. Urza's Science Fair Project. Uh, six mana for four, four artifact creature. Uh, note, artifact creatures didn't have creature types at the time. Uh, is it now a construct? I'm guessing it's now a construct. Let's see. It is now a construct. Um, okay. Two, roll six-sided die for Urza Science Fair Project. One, it gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Two, it gets no combat damage this turn. Three, attacking does not cause it to tap this turn. Vigilance, but we didn't say vigilance at the time. Uh, so two, it deals no combat damage. Four, it gains first direct until end of turn. Five, it gains flying. Six, it gets plus two, plus two. So the idea essentially is one or two is bad. So if I roll a one, it becomes a two-two. If I roll a two, uh, it doesn't deal damage. And then the other three, four, five, six are all positive, and they get better kind of if you go up. Um, this one, I don't mind so much that there's some negative. And once again, it doesn't kill it. Uh, if I roll a one to get a minus two, minus two, now I'm risking if I roll a second time, but at least I know I'm taking that risk when I roll. Um, anyway, so this one's a little bit better of a, of a, a die rolling card. Um, oh, that's interesting. My search does not show the tokens... So 88 cards doesn't count the tokens. There are, s I think, six tokens. So not 88. So 88 plus six. So 94. 94 is the correct number of cards. I think in the first podcast I said there's 88 because that's how many showed up when I looked at my search here. Um, okay, so I want to talk about the lands. I I'm almost out of time, but I just want to reference the lands and reference the tokens. Uh, the lands, um, Chris Rush had come up with the idea of four lands. He couldn't get anybody to do it. I, he told me about it. I was doing the wacky set. I'm like, this is awesome. We did it. Huge hit. We did them again in Unhinged. And then we did them in Zendikar. And now, from time to time, we do four lands. They're awesome. Everybody loves them. Uh, this is another example of uh, an unset sort of pushing in areas. Uh, these were made with Black Border. They were made so that uh, every pack got one. Uh, they were a, a super popular. Uh, definitely one of the reasons a lot of people bought uh, Unglued. Or, 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 or bought... Either bought unglued or bought more than maybe originally planned to buy just because the lands were so cool. Um, there also were six tokens. I don't have them in front of me, but see if I can remember them. There, uh, and the way the tokens work is I didn't label the tokens. Um, and they were the first time we'd ever done tokens, creature tokens on cards. So another thing that undid first. Um, so there was a goblin. There was a human. There was a sheep. There was a squirrel. There was a zombie. And there was... What am I forgetting? Um, they weren't in all colors, so there wasn't a blue one. Um, the idea was that they were flexible. So, like, the white one, we didn't say human or soldier, or actually, humans weren't even a thing yet. Um, but the idea was, if you want to use them, hey, anything that makes sense to use them in, you can use them. Obviously, the goblin and most of the other ones were a little more exacting. Um, like the goblin was for goblin tokens and zombies for zombie tokens, but we didn't label them so that you had the opportunity to do them. I think we didn't even say how big they were so that you could use them for whatever you wanted to use them for. 
Um, one of the things that inspired me when I was making Unglued was uh, I used to do magic, like magic tricks. And there was a deck that I had bought. One, there's a lot of special magic decks. And I bought a deck, and in it just had a lot of weird one-of cards, like uh, the three and a half of clubs or, you know, a queen of hearts that was black rather than red. Um, and just had a lot of weird... And the idea was that you could take these cards and mix it into your... And do fun tricks with them. And it didn't tell you what to do with them. It just said, here's something you could use. And so I really liked that mindset. And that's what convinced me to make the tokens in the first place was, here's a cool thing people might use. And normally when you open a magic pack, you expect just to get playable magic cards. But here's something you can use that's playable, but not a normal magic card. And so I experimented with the lands. I experimented with the tokens. Um, one of the things, hopefully, as you listen to all these podcasts and realize is how much, hey, Unglued did a lot of things, you know, Unglued, four lands, basic tokens, the forecast mechanic, the meld mechanic, the idea of enchant player. Like, there's a lot of things that this is where it started. You know, this is, this is where we did something, and then later, magic could grow from it and learn from it, and that there's a lot of things that have become staple parts of Black Border Magic, that this is where it got its start. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my card by card. Uh, it's kind of fun just going in and, and, and especially these sets, since I, I work so, I, I, you know, I the, the unsets I work so hard on that I, I literally have stories for every card just because a lot of sets I work on and I hand off to somebody else. And so those cards that get made that I never even touched or had anything to do with. Um, but in the unsets, I, I had something to do with all the cards. So I can tell you lots of stories. Anyway... Uh, it was a lot of fun. I had, I had fun doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed this three podcast series. But I am done talking about it. And also, I'm now at my desk. So we all know what that means. It means it's the end of my drive to work. So instead of talking magic, it's time for me to make it magic. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>